The Top 10 Homemade Engines Starting off with some of the smallest engines ever built, and finally we end the video with some of the most incredible and largest engines ever created. So stay tuned and let's begin the Top 10 Countdown. At number 10, the smallest engine by Keith Soloway. This engine is roughly the same size of a quarter, and it has an 8.5 thou diameter piston. It is so small that it can't even be lubricated with oil. So instead it uses the air leaking over the piston, making it an ingenious air bearing. The crankshaft is also very delicate, and it cannot be finger started, so to speak. Instead, the flywheel is started by a very delicate paintbrush, allowing the micro engine to actually run for a few minutes. At number 9, the 8 cylinder homemade Stirling engine. The Stirling engine works by heating and expanding air to a point where it can move a piston. There have been plenty of Stirling engine models on YouTube, but nobody has built anything like Vilmar's 8 cylinder engine. It's basically 8 single cylinder Stirling engines built into one housing, which is made of an old stove pot by the way. The cylinders are also made of spray cans with aluminum insets, so it's a really good demonstration of using household parts, and it shows that you can build engines almost out of anything. At number 8, the Victoria 44. One of the smallest engines ever built is 44 cubic inches. It does incorporate spark plugs and a carburetor from an RC engine, but essentially everything else was homemade, including the distributor. The engine runs off of Coleman fuel, which is mixed with oil, but the most impressive feature is the sound of the engine, and this mini engine already sounds better than my car. The creators also made an updated version with a radiator, so we'll definitely need to see this in an RC vehicle. At number 7, the V12 solenoid engine. Even though it might be considered a motor, the solenoid engine is something out of a Mad Lab, and it's one of the most unique designs out there. It's powered by electricity, and the crankshaft is ran by a set of reciprocating electromagnetic solenoids, and it does not use valves or pistons. There have been a couple of solenoid engines showed in YouTube, but I think one of the most impressive is David's V12. It runs on 24 volts, and it can go to 3200 RPM, so it's one of the fastest running homemade solenoid engines. At number 6, the W32 engine. Jose, known as Patalo, is a retired naval mechanic, and he's also known as one of the most talented builders in the world. He machined 850 pieces and assembled them with over 632 individual screws, so the project took a very long time to complete, over 2500 hours to be exact. And although it runs on compressed air, I would say that the W32 is a work of art, which will probably end up in a museum one day, and rightfully so. At number 5, the 7 cylinder radial engine. Arnold built one of the most impressive homemade radial engines. He did utilize some old air cylinder heads, but other than that, he did a lot of modifying and even machined most of the parts in his homemade powerhouse. The complexity of assembling 7 cylinders onto a central crankshaft is no small feat. So, to actually see one running is really cool, although I don't think you will see this engine mounted onto any aircraft anytime soon. At number 4, the straight 8. Combine two four-cylinder engines, mount a supercharger on top, and you pretty much end up with the straight eight. It took over six months for Desperate Dan to build this epic engine, and it brought a few timing issues along the way. But eventually Dan did surpass the problems associated with fusing two engines together, and built a relatively good sounding engine. The straight eight can also fit in a Honda and give you an extra edge on the street. Although, I would not think that's going to be used for competitive racing. At number 3, the V10 model engine. Keith is yet another talented builder who has built a couple of homemade engines. But virtually everything in this engine was machined. Nothing was built by CNC equipment, which also adds to why this engine was such an epic build. The engine does incorporate the Mega Squirt MS3 fuel injection with full sequential ignition, which probably explains why the engine sounds really good. The only downside is the Mini V10 may be a little bit small for a go kart. So let's hope we can see a half scale next. At number 2, the Flying Milliard. Allied Milliard built a 5 liter V twin engine which is based on two Pratt and Whitney aircraft cylinder heads. But everything else was handmade, all the way from the crankshaft to the custom headers. But most importantly, this engine was actually incorporated into a vehicle. More specifically, a motorbike which can go over 100 miles per hour. The Flying Milliard is definitely a cool way to fuse aircraft design into a road running powerhouse. And that is why it's one of the best homemade engines out there.
Before we get to number one, I just want to add that I did miss a lot of really good homemade engines. So if I missed yours, just put a comment and a link to your video and I'll put it to the top of my comment section. And finally we get to number one, the 9 cylinder radial engine. The number one position was a really close race between the 18 cylinder Doppelstern and Russell Sutton's 9 cylinder radial engine. But for this video Russell wins due to the sheer size and power of its colossal homemade radial engine. The behemoth produces over 300 horsepower at over 3000 RPM, so it's one of the most powerful engines on this list. For this particular build, Russell used the top ends from 9 Honda XR engines, and pretty much pieced the engine together. The engine took a long time to build, over 9 years going through many trials and errors. But Russell has not stopped there, and he's now working on a colossal 14 cylinder radial engine. But something tells me that he's just not going to stop there. So once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you actually enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel.